a defensive back when it comes to the Texans. Are are we in a situation where the secondary should be more of a concern than it is? Because I I don't know about you. Um, I tend to dabble in a lot of Texans talk. It's it's the majority of my life I, between this and the stream and all that. I I'm hearing a lot about DB. I'm I'm hearing a lot about wide receiver. I'm hearing a little bit about secondary here and there, but it, it doesn't seem like when needs are addressed that people are concerned about the secondary is is it a valid lack of concern is it a straw man by me where do you sit on the need for the texans to add players in the secondary yeah so i'm gonna just speak for myself here on this i feel like i've overlooked it and that's what that's why i even brought it up i have to because i feel like i've done the thing of Hey, I do believe that Jimmy Ward is still a good football player if he's healthy, and I'm kind of assuming health. That might be a little tricky given his age and injury history, but I'm doing that for whatever reason. That could be some hope trafficking on my part, so I'm trying to guard against it or at least poke some holes in my thinking there. So I feel like I'm doing that there with Jimmy Ward. Jalen Petrie, we have seen be a good football player at times before. I know he had a down year, but want to think the best of of Jalen Petrie. Okay. Jalen Petrie comeback season, all of that kind of stuff. Right. Like, in my mind, they're fine at safety. They might not be. You know, like we had the conversation when all those safeties got released for the cap casualties, right? And all of these all-pro safeties are on the market, and it's like, yo. Some of them still are. And some of them still are. The Texans should go get those guys. And I felt that at the time, that feeling has kind of died down a little bit, and I'm not exactly sure why because nothing's changed. The logic from that time it still applies, and for whatever reason – I have not kept that same energy. So uh, so I, I'm poking some holes in my thinking here. I feel like I've overlooked safety. Then you go to corner, all right? And I probably like, I'm going to say like just because everybody hates it so much or is so skeptical of it. And I feel like I've got the, hipster? the lead. I feel like I'm a cornerback hipster with the Texans right now because I don't hate the Jeff Okuda and C.J. Henderson signings. Okay. Like I don't. I don't hate them. Yeah, I don't for, hate them. For what they are, for what they're going to be asked to do. Do I think that Jeff Okuda in this post-hype being a top three pick in the draft life can be Steven Nelson ultimately in his career? I don't see why not. Yeah. But but, but should I assume but, that? But Am I taking is, that for granted? I think so. This is why I think you you and me, and again, I'm not separating myself from you, but I, I think you, me, and I think if a lot of people are honest with themselves, loopholes, shout out to the loopholes. If you listen, you are one. I I think that you say what they are, what Jeff Akuda and C.J. Henderson are. And in a perfect world, they're your number two corner. You're putting them on an island like you did Steven Nelson. You're asking them to lock up the number two receiver. And hopefully they perform as well as Nelson did. Although Nelson kind of ran out of gas last year. But it's almost like perhaps your most elite talent is becoming slightly overrated in Derek Stingley. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Derek Stingley, when he's on the field, isn't a baller. And, I, and there aren't too many corners that I think are capable of performing as well as Derek Stingley when he's on the field. But I think the end was so awesome and so great and so carefree that we've kind of forgotten that in the last four years or whatever of Derek Stingley playing football. Yes, the last four years, he's missed at least over a third of the season with injury. And it almost feels like we've kind of forgotten that. So, yeah, we can sit here and say, and you can sit here and say, well, I like Akuda and Henderson as potentially reviving their careers and becoming solid number two corners. And the other element of this is if the front seven improves and you're pressuring the quarterback, then that can essentially make – what you need from the corners a little bit less because they're having to defend receivers as much, but what they are right now, assuming that what's happened the last four years, nearly half a decade, and Derek Stingley misses a little bit of time, what they are is not what they're going to be, assuming that things stay the same, because then you're asking Jeff Okuda, okay, we're facing the Miami Dolphins. You go get Tyreek, all right? Jeff, you go get Tyreek. Uh, Henderson, Desmond King, which one of y'all wants Jalen Waddle? And that's what you're asking. So that's my concern about the secondary is when when Stingley Island's out there, he's got it on lock, but 
have we kind of just forgotten what the biggest question mark was and that the fact that that question mark has played out the two seasons we've seen him. It's not that Derek Stingley is overrated as a football player, but it's more so what the impact of having that guy is if you don't fill in those other positions with adequate players. Like, what does it mean to have a shutdown corner if that's what he is and if he is healthy? What does that do for you if there are this many question marks at those other three spots? And the reality of it is three of your four primary, and I know you got nickel corner to throw in there, but you think about the two corner and two safety spots traditionally, it's like, yo, we are, we've got questions about three of the four of them. And then the fourth, the one that we've got the least amount of questions about has an extensive injury history. So where, you know, what do you feel comfortable about? What do you feel comfortable about when you sleep at night? Like, are you able to sleep at night knowing that you're an injury away from, and maybe not even just an injury away, even if he's out there healthy, can you rely on these other three players to be out there? Yeah, that's the that's the concern. That's the interesting thing about it. And, and meanwhile, wide receiver, uh, you, you basically have, I mean, you have uh, a guy who performed like a number one receiver last year, coming back, looking to get paid. You have a guy who's performed like a number one wide receiver for a long, long time. And then you have a guy who, hell, he performed like, like a number one receiver uh, before he went down. So wide receiver, it's a little bit different. It's a matter of making it work uh, at corner. A little bit different. Uh, and, and I do wonder if, you know, maybe it's a little bit more of a need yeah. than perhaps we are uh, anticipating. And I think it's why it is spots to watch in the draft. You know, safety, corner, these are spots that we might be overlooking. And when we talk about supply and demand, I think there will be some players available for them in that area so we definitely should be giving it a little bit more of an eye